Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Deadfire with me, Bring It Dawn. Let's finish clearing out this room with all these arcane channels. Okay, we got the Mask of the Wake. Grants focus energies, plus one max in power points, and Veiling Hood. Once per encounter, when the wearer is first attacked, they gain the effects of the spell Arcane Veil. Why is that which sees but is not seen? They are the Obscured, the Eyeless Face. The Mask is a favored magical tool of the agents of the Hand Occult, as it represents their patron on numerous metaphorical layers. Priests of Wile meditate while wearing masks, and those wizards who serve the obscured don masks during their secretive rituals. This particular mask, cast in gold and almost featureless, belonged to the Wake Helder, one of the founding members of the Hand of Cult, by their own histories anyway. Though the front of the mask is flat, the inside has been scribed with Inguithin runes, lending it powerful protective enchantments. Ring of Clenched Muscle. Grants experimentation. 10% chance on scoring hit with a weapon to apply a random tier 1 affliction for 10 seconds. And test subject. 10% chance when hit with a weapon to receive a random tier 1 inspiration for 10 seconds. This unbroken loop of puckered meat lightly squeezes the wearer's finger at irregular intervals, as if pulsing with the beat of some unhealthy heart. It's unclear where the flesh that composes this ring came from, or even given its mottled coloration, if it came from a single creature. Sure. Well, that is disgusting. But also pretty good. Oh, hi. It is a nice matching set. Shame there's not a cloak for it. I think I prefer the plus one perception. I shall put it to good use. Uh -huh. Okay, let's report to the Archmagi. The burn book grows warm in your pack. I need to speak to Facina as well. I had to do that while I was still down there. You're, you're back! And a bit more alive than I anticipated. Tane looks you over and chews his thumbnail. You've got some gore on you. It's just awful. That really, Aaron, let me help. Tane starts brushing ropey strips of wild stuff off your shoulders. He pauses to gag softly. If you ever get a chance to explore one of those things, I cannot recommend it enough. 
Really? You know, I wasn't jealous until just now. Hain's eyes brighten with wonder. Welcome back. You've returned in one piece. And you almost got squished by a tentacle. Do you hear that? Lengrath turns her head toward the overlook and closes her eyes. A small smile spreads across her face. Silence. Beautiful silence. Wal's titan form is dead, and it's your doing. We no longer need fear whatever destruction it may have rained upon Aora. Well done. I'll miss it. The shadow of Wal's horrible body has been like a second home. We could have learned so much. Now we're leaving it to rot. Hain lets out a weary sigh. Don't worry, Tane. You can have the next god's body. I'm sure you're right. As always. Just need some time with my grief. Tane hugs himself and nudges a pebble with his toe. What do you plan to do next? Lengrath raises herself to her full height, taking on a slightly more officious air. I was thinking about joining the Circle of Arc Magi. Truly? Because I've had my feel of adult simpletons, and I'm looking forward to some much-deserved time with a book. You've certainly the skill, but I'm not sure about the temperament. You'd be a worthy inheritor of Maura's seat, and a welcome counterweight to some of the more fractious members of the Circle. I should like to see you apply. She smiles. Enjoy yourself. You deserve a reprieve, whatever comes after this. If we don't see each other again, take care. Meeting you was a unique pleasure I won't soon forget. Yeah, completely different from the Lengroth we dealt with in the first game. Lengroth inclines her head to you and thanks in farewell. As she turns away, you catch a glimpse of a smile on her lips. Once again, circumstances conspire to place you at the vanguard of important decisions, huh? Sina huffs and shakes her head. Now that Wal's body is dead, we've rid ourselves of a sleeping tentacle god. Clearly you've learned your lesson at Kadnur. Maybe it isn't what I would have done, but you did pretty good. Sina folds her arms and smirks. Do you think you passed Archimere's final assessment? No doubt he would find some reason to rebuke my performance. But I think the point of this exercise is to show me that I no longer need his approval. If anything, accompanying you has been worth ten apprenticeships. Bekana taught me that I should not wait for anyone's approval before chasing my dreams. From Tain, I learned that our memories define us, no matter where they come from. Lengrath showed me how there is no end to what we can learn about ourselves. The Spore Colony taught me that... No, I cannot begin to discuss it. That creature was disgusting. I learned from your example that a safe choice is preferable to living with uncertainty. You've given me a lot to consider. That much is beyond doubt. You took all that from our time together. When it comes to educating myself, I am like a rodent. I can make a nest out of anything around me. We are not here to delight each other with empty pleasantries. Unless I am mistaken, you have a god to catch, trading companies to pit against each other, and an archipelago to pacify. No pressure, Casita. Thanks for circling back, Watcher. Glad we get this little, uh, moment to ourselves. <laughs> <clears throat> Tane clears his throat and shifts his weight from foot to foot. What you did wasn't what I wanted for Wild's body, but at least you acted on what you thought was right. Plenty of people in this rotten world can't even figure that out. You did good out there. Hope you realize that. Ah, look at me getting all sentimental again. You need anything from your friend Tane, you just ask. He winks and nudges you with his shoulder. I must focus on the task at hand. I remember you. What you want, Grants? Insufferable. Well, looks like we're done here. I'll double check the quest log just to make sure. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. On it. Alright, we have another expansion to tackle, and then we'll start hunting all the mega bosses. Oh yeah. Forgot we had the floating hangman. Been so long since we've been on the sea. Sure, I can't travel all the way over there. Also, I understand you emerged from the bowels of well, and your mind appears to have survived the experience with only minor fractures. That body should have been destroyed ages ago, sparing us all the headache of cleaning up after Wow's mess. One of these days. My sibling must learn the value of an uncluttered house. It's no surprise that the Principe should face a crisis of leadership, much less that you chose to involve yourself, Watcher. With Ferrante supplanted, the Principe lose a voice of experience and authority. But even Ferrante was not without his entrenched defects. Time will tell if his replacement can outdistance his memory. An indomitable threat lies on the horizon, and it grows stronger while the Principe bicker like children arguing over a dropped sword. They will not last. You may not believe me, but I was giddy with delight as I observed that shake-up in the Valian headquarters. Nothing excites me as thoroughly as a good trial. Clever Alvari relies on pragmatism and numbers. Under her leadership, I have higher hopes for the company's financial security, if nothing else. I'm skeptical that coin can navigate society toward anything but corruption. But I appreciate the merchant's willingness to challenge a failure of leadership. If you desire answers, look no further. I have several. The other god spoke of the Guardian of Ukaizo. A fancy piece of construction. The Guardian is a safety measure against anyone or anything that limped out of Aldra's mortar alive. We assumed mortal society would refine their sailing craft over time. That is why the Guardian, deathless and obedient, lingers to preserve the untouched silence of Ukaizo. What is the Guardian? The Guardian is a sacred vow, a promise kept a vigil held without complaint or interruption. Once it was a dragon. Three of them, in fact. We improved on nature's imperfect design, knitting together multitudes to become one efficient and dangerous foe. The Guardian is three dragons in one body. Indeed. Crafting that beautiful menace was a challenge second only to the apotheosis itself. We were no strangers to hammering together animates, but the Guardian required a frame that could outlast harsh treatment, foul weather, and the relentless decay of time. All of it on an unprecedented scale. We installed behavioral safety measures as well. Were it to go mad with isolation, the Guardian cannot abandon its post or willingly end its own life. Say nothing. Only one member of the Apotheosis Project spoke out against the concept of an eternal enslaved Guardian. She was quietly reassigned to Scan. Who were these dragons before they became the Guardian of Ukaizo? They were creatures sworn to a loyal partnership with the Huana. Such unions were not uncommon in those days. As long as the great Huana Empire stood to protect the islands, the tribes, and the luminous Adra, 
Then the dragons stood with the Hawana. That was but one covenant the Hawana struck with a power greater than themselves. The others are not my stories to tell. You reassigned detractors to be part of Skyn. A suitable punishment for those of willful, insubordinate temperament. Skyn was a convenient receptacle. Detractors, mutineers, would-be agitators. They were a perfect substrate for the foundational contours of what would grow to become Scan. Back to my other questions. Don't lose sleep over the Guardian. They were monsters before we bound them, and now they've been set to a more noble purpose. I want to know more about Ukaizo. At its brightest hour, Ukaizo was the seat of an empire that dominated the continent. The Juana kings and queens might have expanded their control even further. But we put a stop to that. The Apotheosis Project needed two resources of uncompromising importance. Luminous Adra and a multitude of souls. Ukaizo had both. What's on Ukaizo now? The city stands as a memorial to a different age. Its vacant buildings and flooded streets are a crown supporting but one jewel. The mechanism of reincarnation. The Ukaizo is a city, a gravestone, a memory, and a machine. People act as if Ukaizo is the key to controlling the Deadfire. The Ukaizo is the Deadfire's true north. Even the Juana, who have long since forgotten Ukaizo's bearing, unconsciously turned to face it in prayer. The last emperor was fond of boasting that an army had never claimed Ukaizo by force. He was easily blinded by pride. Unfortunately, that didn't protect Ukaizo from deceivers within. We feasted and delighted the old ruler, winning his support long enough to activate our machines. From that moment and up through the millennia that followed, Ukaizo has been ours. So your rise to godhood actually set back society's development? Within the dead fire, yes. It was a calculated decision. The Huana Empire didn't conform to our idea of societal perfection, and neither did its trajectory. They came close, but some unfavorable habits were woven in the fabric of their culture. If the Hwana wanted to prove us wrong, they were welcome to rise from the ashes of their past and embrace a future of our design. Back to my other questions. There's no point in mourning the bones of dead Kaizo. What's done is done. Tell me about this enlightened society you once wanted. You're curious to know more? Excellent. I've you talked to her about to this before. You have learned much already. Only ask if you are ready for the truth. Has your opinion of mortals changed at all? You've made questionable decisions. Conducted yourself in a manner I wouldn't tolerate in an Inquisitor. That's a good thing I'm not an Inquisitor then. That is to say, you've earned the same cloud of disapproval under which most mortals live and die. In doing so, you've illustrated my point. They aren't ready. Wodica nods stiffly. You feel her presence drift as a breeze, rustling as it goes. I've already talked to her about that last point as well. Right, goodbye, Fasina, and hello to Kehu. I'm not sure why I can't click over there.
still upset that Palagina took all the equipment that I had put on her with her when she left. Here, knock at the door to your quarters. Alright, I've seen this before. I'm just gonna click through it. Nothing new there. Sea billows beneath your vessel. You stumble to the side, grabbing the rail to keep from falling, as Fawn Ferris rocks hard to port. Handsome Ilium returns to his feet, examining his fingers and wincing. God's alive, Beadul. What in Andra's holy name do you think you're doing up there? It weren't my fault you saw it in Bilge Rat. Beadul spits back. Helsman turns to you. Felt like something went under the ship, Captain. Miranda gestures wildly to starboard. Captain. The hand stumbles back from the deck. Either I need to be giving up the drink for good, or there is a god's darn colossal monster down there. Beneath the surface of the water, you make out a long, sinuous form. No mere fish. The creature swims with two pairs of legs and a long, thin tail. Your lungs su feel suddenly empty, and you gasp as your stomach turns. You fall sideways into light. The light fades into dim. You stand in a forest glade hung thick with shadows. Tall trees surround you. The shriek of a deer pierces the air before being abruptly silenced. From out of the dark, Loba Stelgar and a wolf, followed by a thickly muscled man draped in furs. Galloway, Herald of Berath, were you not content to destroy my creation at Signeth Moor? Do you intend to meddle here as well? Leave now. A smell like rancid blood and days old sweat wafts off him in a wave. I will warn you only once. If you tread upon my island, it will consume you. The large beasts at his side step forward in unison, their tails angrily swishing the air. Why don't you want me to come here? The cold rush of the sea upon Signeth Moor still crashes in my ears. I would not have you apply your same reckless attentions here. I received an invitation to this island. Not from me. Shrug. Your obstinance precludes you heeding words not your own. Fine. <laughs> I have warned you. May aught that follows be on your head. With a sound like a thunderclap, and a bright burst like lightning, the forest disappears, and you are thrust back into your body. You blink against the fading flash. When you can see again, you find your hands bloodless and aching, gripping the railing of your ship. Your eyes trace the giant lizard's path towards the nearby island. It seems to be swimming north, away from the waterfall. You lose sight of the beast as it plunges into the depths. Moatu's voice seems a mere whisper after the power of a god's. I felt such rage from that beast. Hunger too. And beneath all of it, I think, fear. Galloway seems pretty unhappy, with more than just my presence here. The Lord of the Hunt sent that beast. Muatu's words rise in pitch and volume. 
Everyone in Kazuwari could be in danger. You have to help them. Please watch her. His voice echoes at the edge of your perception as your focus returns to the deck of the Von Ferris. The crew, eyes wide, stare at you. Calm down, everyone. Whatever it was, it's gone. Alas' laugh is high-pitched and nervous. Oh yes, we're perfectly safe now. He eyes the water anxiously. Bonferris rocks gently. The large landmass beckons. Rebutara Pass. An unusual structure rises from the thick jungle foliage ahead of you. Vines drape it like decor. It takes you a moment to resolve its form into the spined ribs of some titanic beast. Its skull faces you, upside down, jaw wide open and gaping. Sharp teeth hang above it like the waiting edge of the headsman's axe. Identify the skeleton. The bones are very large, and the teeth very sharp. It doesn't look like it would have been very friendly in life. Approach it. As you near the skeleton, you make out a number of rough pieces of decoration hanging from the old skeleton. Crafted from wood and bone, they hang inside of the mouth and ribs. Among the other desiccated sacrifices within the mouth, you find the remains of a human corpse. Investigate the scene. Plants have overgrown the area, and animal tracks pass through it in all directions, but there's nothing else of interest. Examine the decorations. The objects seem brutal and simple. Perhaps they are of wilder make. Examine the corpse. Hey, we finally passed one. The human the skeleton once was. His arms twisted at his sides, his legs broken. Clearly died in pain. Deep gouges along the sternum and cracks in the rib cage reveal multiple stabbings to the chest likely the cause of death. That, combined with the raised position of the corpse on thick stones, and its prominence in the center of the larger skeletal mouth, suggests that this individual died as a sacrifice. Loot the body. The man's pack contains little more than a grappling hook and some rope, but tearing out its false back reveals a large collection of carefully packed or wooden coins. I continue along the path. You have only just left the gargantuan skeleton behind you. You hear a rustling in the jungle to your left. You hear another to the right. To either side of you, I draped Kith approach, flanked by bristling boars. Yeah, that's a little Don't bit more than move. bristling boars. Those things are ginormous. Scars of battle and decoration stripe the large man's thick arms. He is huge. Return to your little boat, interloper. You do not belong on Kazuwari. His companions, each equally well armed and scarred, stand at ease beside their poor companions, eyes trained on you. Yeah, you're not welcome here. The scruffy orlin nearest you jeers. The boar at her side tosses its head and kicks its hooves in the dirt. Turn back now and count yourself lucky you aren't already dead. Wait, I believe we may have a common friend. Doubtful. He spits the words out as one would a particularly foul curse. A rude old man with a team of boars. Huh, you could be speaking of half the druids in Deadfire. Ateno pulls a simple but wickedly sharp blade from his belt and levels it at you. Enough talk. Leave now, or I'll gut you where you stand and feast the boars on your entrails. Let's talk about this. There's no reason for this to get bloody. No. 
Hateno hefts his blade and grins. The spirit of Moatu manifests beside you in a flash of light. Its sudden appearance doesn't seem to register with the scarred Amar sorry, Amoa and his crew. Why did we stop? We ran into locals, didn't we? I doubt they'll listen to reason. Best to kill them and be done with it. I belong on this island as much as you do. Let me through. You think he follows Toamawai, Hateno? Maybe the faces brought him here. What say, interloper? Do you trespass on the gods' behalf? I am the Herald of Bareth. The Amoa snorts. You don't seem to understand this place at all. I say this one looks soft. I say he will show me what strength he has. Ateno gestures at you with his blade, a slow smile spreading across his scarred face. So be it. Let's see the color of your blood! I see the... All right. I bring your end. That's not very helpful. to get more debuffs out, if I could. Maybe some healing as well. Hey. Lava, I think that's Heal. beyond what now. In there, buddy. See you, trails. After Hateno next. <laughs> Just like how they're going after my back line like this. Dare. 
back here and take care of this guy. I'll try to get Al off the safety. Agree with me. That dog won't hunt. I'm gonna get some raw damage taking on this guy as well. No one knows that, right? And that guy. <laughs> There's a woman! Yes? That's something I can do. Curses! <laughs> you have my attention. Oh? Beyond seek! Aye. Worth and rough! That was useless. <laughs> Uh, this is <laughs> most unpleasant. Speak your mind. Oh? <laughs> How may I help? <laughs> yes, Captain. <laughs> yes? Hmm? What do you need? Here we go. Yeah. That's not supposed to happen. They'll knock it us both. Yeah. What? All right. Uh, Let's get around that. Inside. Yeah. Do you have another heal? Uh, not the one that I Take want, one. but. Remain. We'll take it. Or so. To my limit. This is Heart futile. Stomach. What now? Oh. So they get for picking a fight they couldn't finish. So bad for the boars, though. They didn't deserve that. Alright, I'm gonna call it here. Uh, next time I'll continue further, or I guess just through Rebutara Pass. And further into the island. But for now, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one.